It's the battle of the editors After Effects' new Rotor Brush 3 versus DaVinci Resolve's Magic Mask. I'm going to be testing out these tools on a few different shots ranging across multiple difficulty levels. And I'm not going to be spending a bunch of time messing around trying to tweak and finesse the end result. I'm literally just going to do my selection, hit that render button, and then we can truly see what both of these tools are capable of. One shot, one opportunity. So let's see which of these guys is really the true rotoscoping champ. So let's start in After Effects. We're going to go for this hand shot that I did where there's quite a lot of variation in the movements in my hands. So let's see what Rotobrush can do with this. And let's draw our initial outline. See, now we're on 3.0. So it should be incredible, I hope. We'll see. It requires a bit of finessing to really get the mask around. Seems like they haven't really got the snapping right. It seems like you have to really work hard to get the mask looking good. Got a roto sorted. It's not perfect, like, completely, because it is kind of tricky to really, like, finesse all the little tiny gaps and to really make it snap close to the skin, but we'll see what it does. So let's do its initialization. Rotobush free initializing Adobe Sensei propagation module AI doing its thing to figure out what is this object that you want rotoing? It's a hand rotoed. That's pretty impressive. When I drew the mask on it, which wasn't that like accurate, it seems like as soon as the AI starts to work, it actually really beautifully outlines it like almost perfectly. It remembers that this shouldn't be rotored. When I open, same thing. Yeah, wow. Adobe, impressive. But yeah, let's just freeze this because I want to see what it looks like against the dark background. There's still a bit of chattering here or there, like on the edges, you can see it has some weirdness with the lines. I wasn't going to do tweaks, but let, I reckon with a with a few little tweaks and adjustments here, I could probably get it like pretty spot on. Oh, very impressive for the first try. Let's see how Da Vinci handles the exact same thing. So let's go into the Fusion tab. Let's go for Magic Mask. Let's set this to better. One of the cool things about Magic Mask is that you just draw, draw one line and then it's already basically cut around the hand. And even with the motion blur here, it's still managed to find the edge and do a really, really good roto just from one single brush stroke. Let's finesse it a bit more. I have to say they are quite similar. I just feel like the the process of actually doing the roto is was way quicker for me in Da Vinci than in After Effects. I feel like the actual drawing around the outline of the thing that I want to cut out is a bit more tedious in After Effects to like get it right. It seems like Da Vinci just does it very quickly and gets a really good cut just from a single brush stroke, as you can see. Also, I think I do prefer the output of the one in Da Vinci just looks a bit nicer, like instantly, like the edges are more true to life. I feel like the one in After Effects does feel more kind of sharp and cut. I guess I could mess around with the con contrast slider here like for instance let's put it straight to zero and yeah instantly it kind of gets a bit softer but in DaVinci like there's basically barely any chattering there's nothing that stands out as like this obviously looks like I've rotoed it yeah there's a few errors here and there with this part for instance with the fingers it kind of starts to introduce some of the background but I reckon with a few tweaks here or there I could get it basically perfect so yeah in terms of like speed the actual output like DaVinci takes the crown on for this particular shot definitely if you're a premiere after effect user i don't think it's like it's it's a big deal you could still basically get to this level i think it's just going to take a little bit more work afterwards to finesse the settings to get it to look really really good definitely da vinci was easier and the, the outcome i personally prefer look more professional definitely next we've got the stereotypical a roll youtuber type thing talking to camera and, and we want to cut myself out to put like flames behind me you know the generic youtube kind of effect that you would want to do so let's see how after effects fares in this department pretty good like it's definitely messing up here the information that i gave it to get rid of this it can't sustain it for some reason it just eventually disappears completely yeah the sleeve here as well it kind of is chatter chattering around but the head is really good let's see what it looks like against a black background yeah you can really see the the chatter in here especially <laughs> down here, the edges. It just looks like a very obvious row. Oh, I know I wasn't going to do this, but let's see. We can kind of 
soften the edges a bit more, less find a balance of like, this looks a bit more realistic, more like what the magic mask did by default. It's still quite chattery and the edges kind of are fluttering. This looks pretty impressive. It's a good roto. I just wish that the settings were kind of automatically like this. I think it just looks more natural than what the default way that it makes the edges look when you do the initial roto brush. But this looks good. Other than this one error, it's very impressive. Totally did the job correctly. Let's see how Da Vinci fares with this. Interestingly, on this occasion, having this a similar problem with the chattering here on the edges of my um, arm, in general, it's good. But yeah, it's actually not that much different from how After Effects did it. The only difference is that this is perfect. The software knew and kept up with the fact that, hey, this is not part of this person's body. So that's good. But yeah, the chattering is definitely similar, basically. So I guess it would be another case where I could go into the settings and mess around with the threshold and the gamma and all these crazy settings to find a balance of like not having as much chattering yeah fringe rest all, all these random effects to get it to a place where it's basically the same as what i did with the after effects tweaks but yeah in general it's very similar but it still beat it in my opinion because it did actually get rid of this the one thing that after effects does have that to my knowledge da vinci doesn't tell me in the comments if i'm completely wrong but it has the reflection fine edge tool so for things like hair uh you know more finer edges where it's really specific like with gaps of hair and gaps of things that you would want to cut out from the background it can actually do that so let's see what it looks like in this example when we do it on my hair we want to just kind of make that edge a bit nicer and see it detects it so much more clearly and i guess let's see what that actually results in in terms of being able to row around these really fine small strands of hair that i have on my head it's a lot nicer like the edge just looks more natural with the hair after doing that refined brush tool versus the way that it looks in da vinci it's just a bit sharper a lot more chattering in that area so that's one up for after effects right there again tell me in the comments if i'm wrong i don't believe there's any refined edge tool for the magic mask like this in da vinci and until there is then i think adobe still has one tool that is definitely better than what resolve is doing so i did the exact same shot as this but i just cranked up my aperture so that the focus in the background is not as shallow because I'm actually curious whether or not the Rotobush 3.0 only works well if you have that shallow depth of field, because then the separation between the foreground and the background is really obvious. But if you have a deep focus shot like this, everything is a lot more in focus in the background. Therefore, is the software gonna struggle more? This is what we need to find out. And is there any difference with that? If you happen to be shooting with an aperture that is not like 2.8 or 1.4 or 1.2, you crazy focus pullers. But yeah, if, if, the, if you are in a situation where you're shooting like this, can you still roll or brush? Let's find out. Okay, it's, de it's definitely a bit worse. Like in this situation, you can see what the hell, what the hell is that? My chair behind me randomly appears and there's some other weird artifacts. So yeah, it definitely struggled a bit more. I guess, yeah, it just is harder to separate when there's less of an obvious difference in the depth of field with the foreground of the background. So it did fine, but definitely not as impressive as previously. For some reason at this point, it's like the chair is a part of what's going on. And then it flashes away. I don't know why it does that. Uh, After Effects, was doing the same thing to me a lot before I moved to DaVinci and it was always peeing me off. Definitely did it more with 1.0 and 2.0, but yeah, 3.0 has still not fixed this weird AI thinking. Oh, that's Adam. The chair is now Adam. No, it's not. Same shot in DaVinci. This is definitely more usable once I got rid of the, the plants growing out of my hair. This is more usable out of the box. There's still chittering, weird little quirks here or there, but straight out of the box, so to speak. This is a lot more usable in my opinion than the way that this is looking like. This has too many weird artifacts that I couldn't work with it at all, unless I got rid of them. But then to be fair, I'm not gonna use this if plants are growing out of my head. So this is kind of a tie. They both have weird quirks and problems with being able to roll to a shot that has very, very deep focus. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna do a deep focus shot that it is possible to fix it, but you're gonna have to put a bit more work into getting the mask just right. Okay, last one we're gonna test 
if my dancing career is even possible. Really hope it is. We have this clip of me doing the shovel, the classic dance move. Obviously, there's so much movement here. There's basically no out of focus background. There's a window that's blown out, which might help me stand out, I hope. I'm so curious. How is it going to deal with masking these world-class dance moves? You know what? Way better than I thought. Yeah, you've still got these little like blips of the AI not understanding how I'm moving, but it did way better than I thought. For the first try, this is actually super impressive, I'm gonna be honest. And the fact that it's still not usable on the first occasion, which is to be expected because it's an incredibly complex shot, but After Effects, holy crap, Adobe, you're winning back the editor hearts of mine who left you like two years ago because you were crashing, drink, 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 annoying me all the time. And then Da Vinci was like, come to me, I'll, the grass is greener here, ah, the magic mask, After Effects fusion integrated into the editing experience. But Adobe, woo, you are trying your very best to bring me back. Before I get too impressed, what is Da Vinci gonna do with this? Whoa, okay. Holy balls. <laughs> Different problems. The My shirt is, even though I selected it, is like constantly flickering. I would actually maybe say in this occasion, After Effects beat it. Yeah, like it's none of them are particularly um, usable because there's so many weird artifacts and bugs. My whole body is selected correctly. It's just that there's loads of random background elements that also like flash and get selected. But Da Vinci failed in both departments. It selected the, the chair legs sometimes. It didn't select my shorts properly. It kind of messed up in both ways. So yeah, I think After Effects won on this particular shot, which is crazy. I never thought After Effects' roto brush would even be able to beat Magic Mask at all. The AI is so powerful in it. And some of the, sometimes you can just draw on something and it just finds it and you're like, whoa, oh my God. Like the fact that it can do this so seamlessly is incredible. But on this occasion, After Effects be it definitely but just to reiterate i would never use any of these shots for the final uh edit they both need a lot of tweaks to really get to a point where they're a really solid roto so who do i think won well i've got to give credit where credit is due after effects is roll or brush 3.0 is amazing actually way better than i thought it'd be and that gap that used to exist between the quality of resolves magic mask and after effects is roto brush is way smaller than it's ever been before i still give an edge to the magic mask just because i feel like the whole world workflow to actually roto something out is a bit easier than Adobe's roto brush. It seems like it just takes a little bit less time to, you know, just sometimes just draw even a single line on a subject and then it does a really good job of rotoing them out. Versus After Effects, I feel like you need to tweak and really get the mask just right before you actually do your rotoscope in. But hey, if Adobe keeps continuing on this new mindset that is kind of new for them to actually listen to their users and to implement the feedback that we want, by the time Roto Bridge 4.0 comes out, it might even be better than what Magic Mask can do. Check out this video if you want to know how to make your footage look like it was shot with a gimbal without you even having to use one. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't, because if you do, I'm going to help Roto your dating profile so all of those sexy, sexy matches come flooding in. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.